the law of one unabridged transcription a contact between the L and L group in registered trademark and the social memory complex known as RAW. Session 42 I am RAW. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, I have a question on balancing. It's quite long and we'll copy it directly into the book as it is. If you can answer it without me reading it it will save time, otherwise I will read it. I am raw. We understand your desire to preserve your opportunity. However, a summary of the query would be well. For if we answer a mentally requested query, this query shall not be published. If you wish this answer to be for private use only, we shall proceed. Questioner, I will just read it very rapidly the question, then. I am going to make a statement and ask you to comment on its degree of accuracy. I am assuming that the balanced entity would not be swayed either towards positive or negative emotions by any situation which he might confront. By remaining unemotional in any situation, the balanced entity may clearly discern the appropriate and necessary responses in harmony with the law of one for each situation. Most entities on our planet find themselves unconsciously caught up into every emotional situation which they come in contact with according to their own unique biases and because of these biases are unable to see clearly teach learning opportunities and appropriate response in each emotional situation and must therefore through a process of much trial and error and enduring of resulting pain repeat such situations many many times until they become consciously aware of the need to balance their energy centers and thus lead their responses and behaviors. Once a person becomes consciously aware of the need to balance their energy centers and responses the next step is to allow the appropriately positive or negative responses to emotional situations to flow smoothly through their being without retaining any of the emotional coloration after it has been consciously observed and allowed to to flow through the being, and I am assuming that this ability to consciously observe the positively or negatively charged energy flowing through the being may be augmented by practice of the balancing exercises you have given us with the result in balance being achieved for the entity which would allow him to remain unemotional and undistorted in regards to the law of one in any situation much like the objective viewer of the television movie. Is this correct? I am raw. This is an incorrect application of the balancing which we have discussed. The exercise of first experience experiencing feelings and then consciously discovering their antitheses within the being has as its objective not the smooth flow of feelings both positive and negative while remaining unswayed but rather the objective of becoming unswayed. This is a simpler result and takes much practice, shall we say. The catalyst of experience works in order for the learned teachings of this density to occur. However, if there is seen in the being a response, even if it is simply observed, the entity is still using the catalyst for learned teaching. The end result is that the catalyst is no longer needed. Thus this density is no longer needed. This is not indifference or objectivity but a finely tuned compassion and love which sees all things as love. This seeing elicits no response due to catalytic reactions. Thus the entity is now able to become co-creator of experiential occurrences. This is the truer balance. Questioner, I will attempt to make an analogy. If an animal, shall I say a bull in a pen, attacks you because you have wandered into his pen, you get out of his way rapidly but you do not blame him, or, you do not have much of an emotional response other than the fear response that he might damage you. However, if you encounter another self in his territory and he attacks you, your response may be more of an emotional nature creating physical bodily responses. Am I correct in assuming that when your response to the animal and to the other self seeing both as the creator and loving both and understanding their action in attacking you is the action of their free will then you have balanced yourself correctly in this area? Is this correct? I am raw. This is basically correct. However, the balanced entity will see in the seeming attack of another self the causes of this action which are, in most cases, of a more complex nature than the cause of the attack of the second density ball as was your example. Thus this balanced entity would be open to many more opportunities for service to a third density other self. Questioner, would a perfectly balanced entity feel an emotional response when being attacked by the other self? I am raw. This is correct. The response is love. Questioner, in the illusion that we now experience it is difficult to maintain this response especially if the entity's attack results in physical pain? but I assume that this response should be maintained even through physical loss of life or extreme pain. Is this correct? I am raw. This is correct and further is of a major or principal importance in understanding, shall we say, the principle of balance. Balance is not indifference but rather the observer not blinded by any feelings of separation but rather fully imbued with love. 
Questioner, in the last session you made the statement that we, that is rule, spent much time space in the fifth density balancing the intense compassion gained in fourth density. Could you expand on this concept with respect to what we were just discussing? I am rule. The fourth density, as we have said, abounds in compassion. This compassion is fully when seen through the eyes of wisdom. It is the salvation of third density but creates a mismatch in the ultimate balance of the entity. Thus we, as a social memory complex of fourth density, had the tendency towards compassion even to martyrdom in aid of other selves. When the fifth density harvest was achieved we found that in this vibratory level flaws could be seen in the efficacy of such unrelieved compassion. We spent much time space in contemplation of those ways of the Creator which imbue love with wisdom. Questioner, I would like to try to make an analogy for this in third density. Many entities here feel great compassion toward relieving the physical problems of third density other selves by administering to them in many ways bringing them food if there is hunger as there is in the African nations now, bringing them medicine if they believe they require administering to them medically, and being selfless in all of these services to a very great extent. This is creating a polarization or a vibration that is in harmony with green ray or fourth density. However, it is not balanced with the understanding of fifth density that these entities are experiencing catalyst and a more balanced administration to their needs would be to provide them with the learning necessary to reach the state of awareness of fourth density than it would be to administer to their physical needs at this time. Is this correct? I am wrong. This is incorrect. To a mind-body spirit complex which is starving, the appropriate response is the feeding of the body. You may extrapolate from this. On the other hand, however, you are correct in your assumption that the green ray response is not as refined as that which has been imbued with wisdom. This wisdom enables the entity to appreciate its contributions to the planetary consciousness by the quality of its being without regard to activity or behavior which expects results upon visible planes. Questioner, then why do we have the extreme starvation problem in, generally, in the area of Africa at this time? Is this, is there any metaphysical reason for this? Or is it purely random occurrence? I am wrong. Your previous assumption was correct as to the catalytic action of this starvation and ill health. However, it is within the free will of an entity to respond to this plight of other selves, and the offering of the needed foodstuffs and substances is an appropriate response within the framework of your learned teachings at this time which involve the growing sense of love and service to other selves. Questioner, what is the difference in terms of energy center activation between a person who represses emotionally charged responses to emotionally charged situations and the person who is balanced and, therefore, truly unswayed by emotionally charged situations? I am wrong. This query contains an incorrect assumption. To the truly balanced entity no situation would be emotionally charged. With this understood, we may say the following. The repression of emotions depolarizes the entity in so far as it then chooses not to use the catalytic action of the space-time present in a spontaneous manner, thus dimming the energy centers. There is, however, some polarization towards positive at the cause of this repression is consideration for other selves. The entity which has worked long enough with the catalyst to be able to feel the catalyst but not find it necessary to express reactions is not yet balanced but suffers no depolarization due to the transparency of its experiential continuum. Thus the gradual increase in the ability to observe one's reactions and to know the self will bring the self ever closer to a true balance. Patience is requested and suggested. For the catalyst is intense upon your plane and its use must be appreciated over a period of consistent learned teaching. Questioner, how can a person know when he is unswayed by an emotionally charged situation if he is repressing the flow of emotions, or if he is in balance and truly unswayed? I am wrong. We have spoken to this point. Therefore, we shall briefly iterate that to the balanced entity no situation has an emotional charge but is simply a situation like any other in which the entity may or may not observe an opportunity to be of service. The closer an entity comes to this attitude the closer an entity is to balance. You may note that it is not our recommendation that reactions to catalyst be repressed or suppressed unless such reactions would be a stumbling block not consonant with the law of one to an other self. It is far far better to allow the experience to express itself in order that the entity may then make fuller use of this catalyst. Questioner, how can an individual assess what energy centers within its being are activated and in no immediate need of further attention and which energy centers are not activated and are in need of immediate attention? I am wrong. The thoughts of an entity, its feelings or emotions, 
and least of all its behavior are the signposts for the teaching learning of self by self. In the analysis of one's experiences of a diurnal cycle an entity may assess what it considers to be inappropriate thoughts, behaviors, feelings, and emotions. In examining these inappropriate activities of mind, body, and spirit complexes the entity may then place these distortions in the proper vibrational ray and thus see where work is needed. Questioner, in the last session you said, the self, if conscious to a great enough extent of the workings of the catalyst of fasting, and the techniques of programming, may through concentration of the will and the faculty of faith alone cause reprogramming without the analogy of fasting, diet, or other analogous body complex disciplines. What are the techniques of programming which the higher self uses to ensure that the desired lessons are learned or attempted by the third density self in our third density incarnational laboratory? I am raw. There is but one technique for this growing or nurturing of will and faith, and that is the focusing of the attention. The attention span of those you call children is considered short. The spiritual attention span of most of your peoples is that of the child. Thus it is a matter of wishing to become able to collect one's attention and hold it upon the desired programming. This, when continued, strengthens the will. The entire activity can only occur when there exists faith that an outcome of this discipline is possible. Questioner, can you mention some exercises for helping to increase the attention span? I am raw. Such exercises are common among the many mystical traditions of your entities. The visualization of a shape and color which is of personal inspirational quality to the meditator is the heart of what you would call the religious aspects of this sort of visualization. The visualization of simple shapes and colors which have no innate inspirational quality to the entity form the basis for what you may call your magical traditions. Whether you image the rose or the circle is not important. However, it is suggested that one or the other path towards visualization be chosen in order to exercise this faculty. This is due to the careful arrangement of shapes and colors which have been described as visualizations by those steeped in the magical tradition. Questioner, as a youth I was trained in the engineering sciences which include the necessity for three-dimensional visualization for the processes of design. Would this be helpful as a foundation for the type of visualization that you are speaking of? Or would it be of no value? I am raw. To you, the questioner, this experience was valuable. To a less sensitized entity it would not gain the proper increase of concentrative energy. Questioner, then the less sensitized entity should use a. What should he use for the proper energy? I am raw. In the less sensitized individual the choosing of personally inspirational images is appropriate whether this inspiration be the rose which is of perfect beauty, the cross which is of perfect sacrifice the Buddha which is the all-being in one, or whatever else may inspire the individual. Questioner, I had one experience in meditation which I spoke of before which was very profound approximately 20 years ago, a little less. What disciplines would be most applicable to recreate this situation and this type of experience? I am raw. Your experience would best be approached from the ceremonial magical stance. However, the wanderer or adept shall have a far greater potential for this type of experience which, as you have undoubtedly analyzed to be the case, is one of an archetypal nature, one belonging to the roots of cosmic consciousness. Questioner, was that in any way related to the golden dawn in ceremonial magic? I am raw. The relationship was congruency. Questioner, then in attempting to reproduce this experience would I then best follow practices for the order of the golden dawn in reproducing this? I am raw. To attempt to reproduce an initiatory experience is to move, shall we say, backwards. However, the practice of this form of service to others is appropriate in your case working with your associates. It is not well for positively polarized entities to work singly. The reasons for this are obvious. Questioner, then this experience was a form of initiation? Is this correct? I am raw. Yes. Questioner, thank you. Using the teach-learning relationship of parent to its child, what type of actions would demonstrate the activation of each energy center in sequence from red through violet? I am raw. This shall be the last full query of this working. The entity, child or adult, as you call it, is not an instrument to be played. The appropriate teach-learning device of parent to child is the open-hearted beingness of the parent and the total acceptance of the beingness of the child. This will encompass whatever material the child entity has brought into the life experience in this plane. There are two things especially important in this relationship other than the basic acceptance of the child by the parent. Firstly, the experience of whatever means the parent uses to worship and give thanksgiving to the one infinite creator, should if possible be shared with the child entity upon a daily basis, 
as you would say. Secondly, the compassion of parent to child may well be tempered by the understanding that the child entity shall learn the biases of service to others or service to self from the parental other self. This is the reason that some discipline is appropriate in the teach learning. This does not apply to the activation of any one energy center for each entity is unique and each relationship with self and other self doubly unique. The guidelines given are only general for this reason. Is there a brief query before we leave this instrument? Questioner, if this is not brief enough, don't bother to answer it. But first, I just wondered if certain parts are always removed, the same parts removed in cattle mutilations and is that related to the energy centers and why these parts, these particular parts were removed. But if that is too long of an answer, I'll just ask if there's anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or improve the contact. I am raw. It would be well to respond to the query at another working. The instrument is well. I am raw. I leave you, my friends, in the love and the light of the infinite creator. Go forth, then, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai. And of session 42.